Well, hey gang, Chase here. We're in my house today, and I wanna to talk to you about the Gnar Box. I assume this is short for the Gnarly Box. It was a big deal on Kickstarter because it raised over half a million dollars. You may be asking yourself, what is so cool about this little box? Well, it boasts the ability to let you back up, edit, and share raw photos and 4K video from absolutely anywhere. So theoretically, there's no need to risk bringing your really expensive and fragile laptop into the field. So I decided to take it out for like a day or two. Um, I wanted to find some content that was as gnarly as the gnar box itself. So first I got a hold of a professional skateboarder, then I got a hold of this stunter from my motorcycle group, and it decided to rain for four days. My day job work was getting backed up. I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? Today, I have to go shoot a time lapse of raw photos, shoot my friend's dance rehearsal with the Ursa, and then I have a drone shoot immediately the next morning. This product could really help me at my job. I got all the answers to my questions that I wanted, and hopefully at the end of this video, you'll have the answers you need too to decide whether or not this is gonna be right for you. I love the NAR boxes size and build quality. It's very robust. It comes in at about a pound and it's about the size of my hand. Over the course of the last 24 hours, I threw it in a case. I threw it in a backpack. I put it in my pockets. I tossed it on the dash of a car. This thing can go anywhere. Uh, compare that to a laptop. You know, a quality laptop's gonna weigh three, four pounds. You are not gonna wanna carry it in your hand all day. You're gonna need at least a backpack and it's a fragile piece of equipment. You might break it. The Narbox is not fragile. It is waterproof, it is dustproof. These doors are really solid and are gonna keep all of that stuff out of your ports. Um, it's also shock resistant. One thing that the Narbox does allow you to do is that it allows you to back stuff up from any iOS or Android phone or tablet for that matter and that could be really helpful. Once it's off your phone, you can still access it on the Narbox using the Narbox app, which I'll get to later, and you can edit and share it still. On the website, it says that the battery lasts about four to six hours. It drained a lot faster than that when I was actually dumping cards. Maybe it's not so bad when you're just playing around on it. I was using an external charger yesterday in between shoots to keep the thing charged up, and that worked pretty good. In fact, with a laptop, you're gonna need an outlet, so point Narbox. So the Narbox comes in two models. There's a 128 gigabyte version and a 256 gigabyte version. I wasn't very happy to open the app and find out of the 128 gigabytes I was supposed to have available, only 107 of that were available to use. But if you're shooting mainly with like DSLRs or drones or GoPros, or any device that doesn't record really big video files, that might be enough to back up an entire day or two worth of shooting. Or if you're a photographer, you could probably back up multiple shoots on this thing. So when I started my time lapse yesterday, I was using 5D taking raw photos onto an SD card. When I swapped my card during this like break in action, I was able to put it into the NAR box and I could preview the photos while my camera was shooting on the second card. I didn't need that to look at them. I was able to kind of get rid of all of my test shots and I only dumped the shots that I needed so I saved that space, which was great. Okay, so Zach and I are stepping out to get some food because this NAR box is transferring my car for me in my pocket and I don't have to sit there and babysit a laptop until it's done. That actually got me thinking of a few times in the past when I would have gladly paid a few hundred bucks for that capability. I used to be hired as an extra shooter on a lot of concerts. It's the end of the night, but the person doing the edit needs your footage, and they need it sooner than later. I had to wait for that person, then they had to pull out their laptop, then they started dumping your card if they even got to your card first, and you're just stuck there waiting for an hour or two. You could just give them your cards, but then you don't have those cards to use until you make time to meet them in their part of town when they're free. And that's just super annoying. So if I had the NAR box, I could have been dumping those cards while I was shooting and just loaned him the NAR box and pick that up whenever. So even the 256 gigabyte model of this is not 
enough for a full day shoot when I'm shooting raw at 4K. I think that even when you shoot ProRes, you're gonna fill up a 256 gigabyte card with like 50 minutes worth of footage. And that's at a standard frame rate. But one like major selling point of the Narbox that I haven't even mentioned yet is its ability to transfer cards directly to an external hard drive. That is a pretty big deal. I can dump a card and back it up and then reuse it on my shoe. All while simultaneously still having all the features that the Narbox comes with at my disposal. And the transfer time with the bigger cards was pretty good too. I was using a USB 3.0 card reader and I compared it to the speed of my trash can and it was about a third of the speed. When I used to do music festivals, I was out in the field sometimes literally in a tent for five days straight. Whether you're shooting big files or small files, you're gonna fill your cards up and you're gonna have to dump them. And if I had had the Narbox in that situation, I could have just had my cards transferring during the day and then I could have gotten a few more hours of precious, precious sleep, which you need so much out there. You don't need an external Wi-Fi network to use the Narbox. It has its own Wi-Fi network, which is pretty cool. You can still use like a 3G and 4G network, so you can still send and receive texts and all that good stuff. The app is really intuitive, you know? It's really basic, it's practical. There's a lot of practical edit options for photos and videos. One thing that kind of stinks is that there doesn't appear to be any project files. So if you're editing a reel on the Narbox and your boss comes up and says, hey, can you make a highlight reel of something different or the client wants a reel of something else right now, you're gonna have to delete everything you just did to start over. One way around that though is the Narbox does allow up to four devices to connect to it at once. One thing I did really like was the ability to play back footage as soon as the card was dumped. When you're flying drones or if you're using GoPros, Things without playback screens or really tiny ones, the only option for playback on site is to usually use like a brand specific app. And in my experience, it never works. It just doesn't work or it plays back all choppy. This morning, the real estate client actually stopped by at the end of the shoot. He declined being on camera, but I was able to show him all the stuff we had gotten and he chose the exact shots he wanted. That saved me so much time in the edit. One thing to keep in mind is that the Narbox is still really new and I think it has the potential to be something totally awesome and it seems like the company wants to get it to that point. If you check out their website, they're listening to customers, they're constantly making upgrades. Currently, I think the Narbox is a really great purchase for some people. It might not be justifiable for others yet. But I hope this video at least helped you decide whether or not it's right for you. And if you'd like any more information on the Narbox, please visit its page on bnh.com.